Hello, my name is Joshua Brown from the job aptitude testing website, howtobecome.com. And in this tutorial, I will teach you how to pass a network rail assessment. So if you have a network rail test coming up, then please make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to show you how to pass it. To achieve that goal, this is what I'll cover. I'll cover the different types of the network rail test questions that will come up during your assessment. I'll also provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to tackle network rail assessment questions, and I'll give you plenty of essential tips to help you pass your network rail assessment at the very first attempt. Plus, I'll also tell you where you can instantly access over 1,500 network rail assessment practice questions and the fully worked answers. Just very quickly, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I want to help you to pass your job aptitude tests and I can only do that if you are subscribed and please don't forget to hit that like button because this tells me you find these tutorials useful. Okay let's take a look at that first question type which is numerical reasoning tests. This is a very popular category of job aptitude tests that is almost certainly going to appear on your network rail assessment so I have ensured I've put together the most frequent numerical question types used to help you practice and pass. Let's start off with this percentage question to just warm you up a little bit. So question one is this, Pankash enters a shop and purchases a box of oranges for £4.50. He receives 20% off his final purchase and pays with a £10 note. How much change does Pankash receive? Is it A, £6.50, B, £5.80, C, £6.40, D, 90p or E £3.60. Now when dealing with numerical reasoning questions like these, you need to first work out the key information you need. You will notice I've put that key information in bold to help you with this question. So the £4.50, 20% off the final purchase, he pays with a £10 note, how much change does he get? So first, we need to work out 20% of £4.50. To do this, we need to divide £4.50 by 100. And we then times that number by 20 to work out what 20% of £4.50 is. This will give us 90p. Now the reason is that we divide it by 100 is because 100 is our total percentage number. It's always out of 100%. So that is always the formula that you'll use to help work out percentages. The next step in this is quite simple. We just need to minus that 90p from the £4.50 to get £3.60. Then if we take our £10 and minus the £3.60 from it, it gives us a total of £6.40. So the correct answer is C, £6.40. If you need to pause this video and read through that again or rewind it and listen to that tutorial step by step again, please do because it's really important that we get these basics down really well so then we can answer the more tough National Rail style aptitude test questions that I'm going to give you next. Let's try a question for yourself quickly though. So please put your answer to question two in the comment section below for marking and if you have any difficulties please do let me know and I'll get back to you with the correct answer and how to work it out. So question two is this, Phoebe is shopping for pet supplies. She makes three purchases of rabbit feed which total £8.50. Phoebe receives a £15 discount on the final purchase and pays with a £10 bill. How much change does Phoebe receive? Is it A, £1.27, B, £7.23, C, £3.28, D, £2.78 or E, £1.50? I'm going to give you 20 seconds on the timer to work this out, starting now. Okay, how did you get on? Don't worry if you've not worked it out still. Pause the video and just keep going until you get it. The more you practice these questions, the quicker you will get. Remember, please put your answer in the comment section below where I will mark it for you. Okay, let's move on to another practice question for you quickly. So now it is time to make these a bit more challenging by mixing in visual graphs and tables. 
These numerical question types are known as data interpretation tests and are frequently used in network rail numerical reasoning tests. So here's the question. If you were to purchase three bananas and 10 apples using a 20 pounds bill, what percentage of your money will you spend? Well, here is that table and here are your answer options. A, 10%, B, 20%, C, 25%, D, 15% or E, 5%. So we're gonna to need to use a similar formula like we did earlier to work this out. And I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. But first of all, something I want to mention here is numerical data interpretation questions look more intimidating than they actually are. The trick here is to find the relevant information you need and disregard the rest. Most of the information will be redundant. So here, we only need to look at the rows for apples and bananas. So we can remove the rest just as I've done so just there. So we only now see the apples and bananas information because we don't need the rest. So to answer the question, we need to first work out how much money you spent. So three times 35p equals one pound and five pence. That's for the three bananas. And then three pounds for the pack of 10 apples. So step one is to do a very quick calculation. One pounds and five P plus three pounds gives us four pounds and five pence. Next, what we need to do is the calculation to work out the percentage. It's a really, really simple one. So this is the formula. To work out percentages, we need to divide the value by the total value and times by 100. So this is what I mean by that. We take that four pounds and five P we have, divide it by 20, because that's the 20 pounds note that we're using to pay. And that gives us a total of 0 0.20. Now to turn that back into a percentage, we just times it by 100. As mentioned earlier, percentages are always out of 100. So we times that value 0 0.20 by 100, and that gives us a total of 20. So the correct answer is B, 20%. So what I want you to do is to take a shot at doing this yourself. So please put your answer to question four in the comment section below of the video for marking. So here we go. Numerical reasoning question number four is this. What is the percentage change in the number of females who play the guitar from 2022 compared to 2023? Here is that information you can see in the tables. Remember, just as before, you will need to sift out the information you need from the table. Remember, most of that data in the table is redundant. It looks more overwhelming than it actually is. Once you have the data you need, you can apply a similar percentage calculations from before to work out your answer. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to work this out on the timer starting now. Brilliant, you're doing great. How did you get on? Put your answer in the comment section below and I'll get back to you with the correct answer. So question number five, I want you to practice this really well because so many people struggle with the numerical reasoning assessment part of this test. So below is a table representing costs for different products. Product Z gets taxed 25% of the total sales revenue. What would the total sales revenue be with tax for Product Z? So here is that table. And here are your answer options. I'm gonna, again going to give you 30 seconds on the timer starting now. Now don't worry if you're struggling to do this within the time limit. Like I said, you need to just practice plenty of these question types and you will speed up. And I'm gonna give you one more to practice now. And if you do need more, I'm gonna mention in a bit how you can get my 1,500 network rail assessment practice questions for you that you can have instant access with today. So what is the ratio of females to males who play hockey in 2023? Here is the information that you need. 
Here are your answer options. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds on the timer. Try and do it within that time limit. If you can't, don't worry, just pause the video and get the correct answer and let me know what you think it is in the comment section below. Here we go. You're doing really well, stick with me. We're gonna take a look at one more question before moving on to a totally different type of network rail assessment. So this question is a bit more tricky. How much more does it cost the company to place four 40 second video advertisements without a voiceover and one 30 video advertisement with a voiceover compared to a company placing six 20 second video advertisements with a voiceover and one 10 second video advertisement without a voiceover. A lot of information there. Take a look at the chart. If you need to reread it, do so. Here are your answer options. You have 30 seconds starting now. Okay, the next area I want us to move on to is to verbal reasoning tests. This is the next type of network rail question type, which we are gonna cover. And again, so many people struggle with this, but actually this can be a really nice and simple question type for you to score highly on. And just before we do do that, at any point during this tutorial, and if you want to, you can click that link in the top right hand corner and head over to my website, howtobecome.com, where you can access 1,500 network rail actual test preparation style questions, including the ones that we're covering right now, plus the fully worked answers and strategies to pass each question type to make you the standout candidate. Okay, here are those verbal reasoning test questions. So what you need to do is read the blow passage carefully and answer true, false, or impossible to say based on the statements made. So let's read that passage together. The blow passage is a statement from a National Science Magazine report. Park Ranger Winnie Scott, who is leading the initiative to encourage more red squirrels in the Ashdown Forest has said, assessing the forest regularly and the wildlife is highly important to make a real difference to the ecology of the area. We have recently introduced multiple pine martin den boxes throughout the forest as they naturally suppress grey squirrels and allow red squirrels to thrive. We are hopeful that by doing this, it will greatly encourage the return of the native red squirrel in the area. We have set up trial cameras in the den boxes to track the progress of the pen martins and will continue to closely monitor the situation. Here is the statement, only one den box has been set up. Now is it true, false or impossible to say? I'm going to let you give this a go first before we go through it together. So you have five seconds on the timer starting now. How did you get on? Did you answer true, false, or impossible to say? Well, here is the key bit of information we need. It says in the passage, we have recently introduced multiple pine martin den boxes throughout the forest. So the correct answer is false here. The statement is wrong because the statement says only one den box has been set up and we can see that is not true. Now I want to give you a really top tip here for answering these questions and that is to never make assumptions. Always choose your answer entirely based on what the passage actually says. If it doesn't say anything, if it's ambiguous, that is not enough to give us a correct or definitive answer. So I'm gonna give you a few of these practice questions now to get on with. You should find these hopefully fairly easy, but if you don't, remember, never make assumptions, take your time, and just practice more of these question types to increase your speed. So again, question nine is this, read the below passage and carefully answer true, false, or impossible to say. The passage is exactly the same as before, so here is the statement. There are currently no red squirrels in the area. Is that true, 
false or impossible to say. You're gonna have five seconds on your timer to work this out. This time, please do put your answer in the comment section below the video where I can mark it for you. So here we go, five seconds starts now. Okay, let's move on to question 10. Again, the exact same passage, but the statement is different. There were already pine martins in the forest before the park rangers intervened. True, false, or impossible to say. Your five seconds starts now. Great, you're doing really, really well. Stick with me. The next statement is this. Pine martins are a way of naturally suppressing red squirrels. Is that true, false, or impossible to say? Five seconds starting now. Okay, we'll move on very soon to the next question type, but let's take a look at another statement. The trial cameras have night vision to track the pine martins during the night time. Again, true, false, or impossible to say. Do let me know in the comment section below what your answer is. You have five seconds to answer this starting now. Okay, let's move on to the next type of network rail question type, which is inductive reasoning. Wow, this is an area that I get so many requests from people to, for advice and tips for. And don't forget, if you would like to practice any of these question types in mock exam conditions, you can click that link in the top right hand corner if you want to and head over to my website, howtobecome.com, where you can instantly access my 1,500 network rail assessment test questions and answers resource. Okay, let's move on to the next network rail question type, which as mentioned is inductive reasoning tests. So let's take a look at a common but tricky network rail style inductive reasoning question type. Which tile is next in the sequence? Here is that sequence. So the question mark is that final piece in the sequence that we need to work out what it is. We have these answer options A, B, C, D and E. Now what you need to do is take a close look at the pattern that you can find. These are all about patterns and identifying them. So notice, if we look in the top left corner, if we start the sequence from left to right, remember it does use that word sequence, so we know there is a pattern there, we can see the pattern moves at a 45 degree angle each time. So the arrow here is pointing down, then it slightly moves up by 45 degrees, then again it moves anti-clockwise again to be here, and then another anti-clockwise turn of 45 degrees. So therefore, we can almost identify very quickly that answer option A, answer option C, or answer option E are all potential correct answers for us because these have all moved to the correct 45 degree position after this last tile in the sequence. However, make sure you also take note of the colors. But remember, sometimes the colors can just be there as a distraction. In this instance, the colors are really important because we have three potential answer options. So which color is it? Well, again, look at the sequence and look for that pattern. It starts off as blue, then moves to green, then to yellow, then back to blue. So therefore, the next color should be green, which makes the correct answer option E. Now again, if you need to rewind this video and watch that again to work it out, please do so because it's so important that you fully comprehend these question types and how to work out the answers. What I want you to do now is to try another one for yourself. Again, please put your answer to question 14 in the comment section below the video for marking. Thank you. So question 14 is this, again, which tile is next in the sequence? I've upped the ante again a little bit here by making it a little bit more confusing, similar to something that you could expect on your real assessment. And when answering this question, remember the rules we just looked at, including color changes and looking for patterns in object movement. Remember that some information or changes may be redundant just to make the question more challenging. So here are your potential answer options. If you need to pause the video, please do so. If not, try tackling this under a 20 second timer. So your timer starts now.
How did you get on? I'm really interested to see if you got the correct answer. Please put it in the comment section below so I can mark it for you. Let's take a look at another one, exactly the same as before. Here are your answer options and you have 20 seconds on the timer starting now. Okay, let's try another one. You're doing really well, so stick with me. Here is the same question again. Which tile is next in the sequence? Is it A, B, C, D or E? You have 20 seconds on the timer starting now. Okay, you've done brilliantly so far. Let's move on to the situational judgment test questions. And remember, at any point, if you do want hundreds more network rail assessment practice questions, please do click that link in the top right hand corner of the video or in the description below to access them right now. Okay, the situational judgment test questions. Again, another tricky part of the assessment, but let's take a look at a sample question so you can get some practice. So you are sitting in the staff canteen when three other members from your team sit down at your table. As you engage in friendly discussion with them, two of the members begin to mock the other person for his religion. Although they are only joking, you can see that the individual in question has been upset by these comments. Do you A. Join in, it's just a bit of banter. B. Speak up and inform your colleagues that they should have more respect for other religions. C. Ask the offended colleague to speak to you in private afterwards where you will discuss the comments. Or D. Try to change the subject. Now, what would you do in this situation? Well, potentially the correct answer here should be B. It should be speak up and inform your colleagues that they should have more respect for other religions. Integrity and respect for others is crucial for network rail jobs, all network rail jobs. It doesn't matter what role you are applying for. You will always be expected to treat others fairly and with respect. So that's why the suggested answer option here is B. Now this is the most efficient response as you are clearly demonstrating to the affected individual that discrimination of any kind will not be tolerated as well as admonishing your colleagues for their behavior. I want you to try a question for yourself here. So, so question two or question 18, if you've been following us throughout the entire video is this. You are on a work trip with a colleague and are passing near a clothes shop. The two of you are heading to another station. Your colleague gets very excited, dashes into the shop and starts trying on denim jackets. Your colleague says this, I love this shop. I might have to buy a few things from here. Do you A, inform your colleague that they are acting very unprofessionally and tell them to get back to work. B, leave your fellow colleague to it. It's not your problem if they want to mess around. As long as you continue on your way to the station, you are not complicit in their actions and have done nothing wrong. C, inform your fellow colleague that you'll be reporting them to your line manager if they don't leave the store immediately. Or is it D, do nothing, they're only having a bit of fun. Now I'm gonna give you five seconds here on the timer to work this out. Let me know your answer in the comment section below. Here we go. Let me know which one you would choose and I will tell you what my suggested response should be. So the next thing to do is to please make sure you click that button in the top right hand corner of this video right now. Head through to my website howtobecome.com where you can access over 1,500 network rail style preparation aptitude test questions and the fully worked answers to each question. You can literally have online access within two minutes from now and it is guaranteed to help you prepare effectively for your next job aptitude test and also more importantly put your head of the competition. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe as I'm on a mission to help as many people as possible pass their aptitude tests and job interviews and I can 
only do that if you are subscribed. Please also hit that like button because this tells me you find these tutorials useful and it encourages me to make more videos just like these. If you have any questions regarding your aptitude tests, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below the video where I will get back to you. And finally, don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn. I've put my LinkedIn link in the description below. It's always great to connect with like-minded professionals such as yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the best with your assessment. Have a brilliant day.